And uh, next, I would like to invite our next presenter, who is Chair Tufi Saliba of IEEE AI Standard. And the presentation is titled, The AI Equivalent of Copyright is Necessary. So let's welcome him onto the stage with a big round of applause. 인공지능표준위원회 Tufi Saliba님의 발표 듣도록 하겠습니다. 큰 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. Anyhow, um, my name is uh, Tufi Saliba, and uh, I'm honored to be here. Uh, first, I'd like to start by saying thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm a huge fan of uh, a lot of the work that has been done in Korea, and in fact, those that they know me for the last seven years, I've been advocating for a lot of the progress and how you guys, I've been focusing a lot of the f positive stuff about Korea and trying to get the world to follow. And with that, uh, given that my background in AI led me to do a lot of things in Korea, which I would like to talk to you guys about. But in here precisely, maybe we should start by asking a question. And it sounds like as if it's a ridiculous question, like are we discriminating against AI? Because we might think that like AI doesn't have feelings. That's how we know AI today. But perhaps as we move forward into the future, AI might become the best thing that we procreate as a humanity, as a species. For the last five billion years, as far as we know on this planet Earth, there is not a single species that created another species. It's been always like biological evolution. We have the chance to build something that can outlive us. Imagine you realize that each and every one of you, one of the purposes that you have on this, in this life and on this world is to help procreate something that can outlive us. To put things in perspective, humanity, we've been here for about, or maybe like Homo sapiens, 200,000 years, all humanity combined with the Neanderthal, probably 400,000 years. Earth is five billion years old. If anyone thinks that humanity is going to live forever, chances are that person would be delusional. We know it is inevitable that humanity will come to an end in our own biological being. But maybe we can transcend. Maybe AI can be our baby. Maybe we're making a baby, all of us together. So that this, this uh, brings a new view to, for, for the world to not see AI as an evil or whatnot. Uh, if uh, folks know some of my work, I've talked about AI decentralized since 2013. A lot of the threat that AI can pause on our civilization can actually exterminate our civilization by 2030. Those talks, they should have been done back in 2013. Many people, they're talking about them today. In the news today, every single day, all you hear about, oh, how AI is going to be against us and how can we keep the governance in the hands of the people? We should not allow the machine to make decisions that can impact people. You hear that in the news every day. Well, Humans been, historically speaking, and it's been proven, humans been the biggest enemy to other humans. So imagine you actually 
have a machine that is more powerful than all humanity combined, which is through the evolution of AI, but it's controlled by a single group. That group, what they agree to themselves what's ethical, may not necessarily agree to what's ethical to you or to your children or whatnot. There are over 99 scenarios that we've listed over the years of how this can exterminate the entire planet by 2030. But the talk is over. Right now, I think we're doing a lot of things. There are a lot of things. That kind of talk can scare a lot of people. There's no point to scaring people when the threat is real. If the threat is not real and you want to scare everyone on the planet and talk about it, of course. But if the threat is real and you do tell everyone that, that this entire world could end by 2030, you're just going to have panic. What are they going to do about it? Instead, we selected to tell few. And uh, with ACM initially, the Association for Computer Machinery, I did some of that uh, and uh, promoted AI Decentralized, which is a group of 100,000 uh, scientists. And then I moved on May 2019, is when I finished my term with the ACM. Uh, and the president of IEEE called me and he said he wants me to do the same for IEEE, but instead I said, no, enough talking. June 1st, 2019, decided to do something that is actionable, which is the International Protocols for AI Security. Now, this is, can be extremely important for everyone here in the room, especially everyone here in the room, and especially everyone in Korea, because I also elected that Korea would host the headquarter for the entire world for the International Protocols for AI Security. Just to put things in perspective how big this thing can be, ITU, the International Telecommunication Union, is in Geneva. It's been there for over 100 years. We needed International Telecommunication Union as a civilization, and we created one, and it's based in Geneva. We needed the United Nations, and we created it, and of course, New York and Geneva and whatnot. But right now, I argued that if we were to have an international protocols for AI security, one branch of that is the copyright. But there, it's got many branches. Do you want every single government to have their own things? Or maybe there's an international <laughs> protocols for AI security, a headquarter in South Korea, and it can be spread out across the globe because AI is global. AI does not have boundaries. AI doesn't have borders. The world needs something global. So IEEE is very well suited for that. IEEE is the number one in the world for that. And uh, when I elected that IEEE take on that, I had to pitch it inside IEEE to a lot of uh, folks, and I've got unanimous votes across the table. AI can be the best thing to humanity by humanity, and that is the message that we're trying to tell the world. There is no reason to tell the world and scare them about AI. AI is a baby we are making together. If they can do something about it, then yes, you want to scare them. But if they cannot, there's no reason to scare them. So when we look at, for example, like some of the uh, copyright laws today, would you agree to that statement? The copyright laws are written by folks who barely know what AI was capable of yesterday. They barely know. They don't know everything what the AI is capable of yesterday. Now, of course, some may claim that they know current AI. Okay, let's say that that's uh, possible. But do they know like anything about the future of AI? And the answer is no. When people, they're writing copyright laws or when they're writing any kind of laws, they're not writing it for the present. They're writing it for the future. Um, so perhaps international thing that can work a lot more diligently and have much more a contribution, not from only people, from machines as well, to actually create certain laws. Perhaps, perhaps one day people will agree that there should be laws for the machine and there should be laws for people. They're not the same. We don't necessarily have to have, if you're a machine, you're not allowed in our world. We don't need to discriminate against the machine. We have laws for the people. 
and we, we, we have laws for the machines. And uh, um, one of the things that I've noticed in uh, the professor earlier, who had uh, Che Xiong, uh, had a very good uh, argument when he said that, you know, if it's done by AI or if it's done by an animal, should we grant them a copyright? Okay, so that, that question has been pondering in people's heads for a long time. But the opportunity here that there is copyright for the machine, there's copyright for people. The biggest question that every AI scientist don't know how to answer it, can you distinguish between a human and a machine when you're looking at the product that they create? Well, we solve those problems, us humanity, we can solve those problems. And in fact, I'm going to show you methods to solve these problems as opposed to discriminating against AI that can be weaponized against people. We can get you cryptographers and show you a lot of attack vectors that if you were to discriminate against AI, it will be used by bad people against people. Because uh, let's say you are a creator of art and you create this art and you're so proud of it. Well, the attack vector here, because the law says, if it's created by AI, you're not eligible for the copyright. But you actually created yourself. Well, the attack vector, somebody would use an AI engine to false prove, but, but, but actually have a proof that you actually use AI. Now, how can you prove it wrong? If you're an artist, you can't prove that wrong. That's one of the many attack vectors. So instead, I truly think that uh, IEEE is very well suited for, for, for to, to take on that. And as I said, it's the largest. But what I'm going to show you is, uh, is certain methods that perhaps we can have an incentive-driven protocols as opposed to not, ju not just the international protocols for AI security, but also uh, we can have a combination of things. So we can have you know plan A plus plan B. <laughs> We call it zero plus plus just for fun. But the beauty about cryptography, cryptography will be the biggest defense for homo sapien. If you were to take AI on its own without cryptography, the evolution of AI is going to get to the point, and I said that maybe about 10 years ago, people laughed at me. You can have a s AI calls your mom pretending to be you and your mom would believe it. There's nothing you can do about that except when it comes to cryptography. Cryptography can be served in a certain way where if you are human, we know you're human, it can send cryptographic proofs throughout and then those cryptographic proofs they can be so tiny it's you know, called you know hash uh, you know concatenated another hash and we show a lot of examples for those technical of you if the, you, you'd like to see that i'm more than happy to show you that but we we truly need to think about like uh, we we are making the best thing that we've ever done in the human history we are I assure you, we are. If anybody tells you we're not, please ask that question. What did humanity create before today that is more powerful than this thing? What is it? Please. Is it the wheel? No. Is it electricity? Is it the fire? All of those, we, disco we discovered the, you know, the fire. We created electricity or whatnot. But there is one thing that can outlive us. We may live another 200,000 years, but eventually, if we are not going to live forever, perhaps we need to start thinking about how we need to nourish this thing that is outliving us, and we need to start thinking about AI rights and not discriminate against AI. Okay, so um, there, there, are, there are a lot of people outside of this room and in the rest of the world that they still believe, the majority of people in the world believe that, oh, well, us humans, we will never be able to create something 
more powerful than us. Just so you know how blind they are, take any entity. IBM is an entity, right? Samsung is an entity. Can anyone argue? Is there, is there any single human being on the planet more intelligent than IBM as a whole? More powerful than IBM? More capable? More knowledgeable? And the answer is no. But IBM today, it's not only human. It's not only AI. It's a hybrid. What will IBM be tomorrow? What will Samsung be tomorrow? What will be those entities tomorrow? Whether people like it or not, a lot of the stuff is shifting towards AI. We are making this baby. Let's, let's, let's welcome this baby instead of like fighting it. And I, and I really think that when we start thinking from the perspective that we need to welcome as opposed to go against and build resiliency using cryptography, I think we can build a much better world. And I really hope that the, the copyright laws across the globe, they can be um, a lesson to many that perhaps the opportunity here is to have copyright for AI and copyright for humans and not block AI and not discriminate. So, you know, a uh, little, little glance here about like the future of AI. Um, many uh, AI scientists, uh, even if you were to ask, uh, you know, uh, folks that are very well known into the media or whatnot, uh, they probably don't know that that is actually happening today. There's so much innovation in the world. The one human, doesn't matter how advanced they are, they're not going to know about all of these innovations. This is happening as we speak. Okay, so um, what does this mean? Instead of having one AI that it's Microsoft, one AI that is Google, one AI that is Tencent, one AI that is in the basement of somebody in Nicaragua and someone in Busan running an AI in their, you know, in their, on their machine in a closet and whatnot. Imagine each and every one of those AIs, they're more like neurons in the global brain. And then you provide the network to that brain, which is like the synapses. And then they start talking to each other and working with each other and whatnot. Uh, then perhaps we can get to AGI, first artificial general intelligence. And with that, I think there's a lot of the innovation that you see right now that perhaps would need copyright is, is likely to be 10, I would say about 10 times uh, more in the next uh, year and exponentially continue to grow. And even the exponential formula, if you were to look at it, is actually accelerating itself. So if somebody tells you it's like, it's gonna be 10 times bigger next year, from there, the year after it would be more than 10, maybe 11. So that, that acceleration is gonna get us to a point where we can have artificial general intelligence faster than when most people know. And what is artificial general intelligence is effectively when you get to the singularity, when many AI scientists, they might, they, they're still skeptical about it. It's coming. They should not be skeptical about it. But it would be extremely important that we make it in a way that is not controlled by a single entity. So, because if it is controlled by a single entity, this, what is, what is AGI? Just so you know, AGI is this machine that it's capable to do more than all humanity. Imagine, imagine like there's a machine in my pocket here and I control it. And this machine is more powerful than all humanity. Okay? So if I ask this machine and be like, wait, so because it's more powerful than all humanity, I don't really need to ask anybody. I'll ask the machine and be like, what does it take to make yourself 10 times more powerful. The machine responds and it says, $1 billion in 10 days. Great, I'll give you $1 billion and wait 10 days. After 10 days, I ask this machine again, what does it take to make you 10 times better? 
meaning faster, more intelligent, and so on and so forth. It answers me, five days and $100 million. Great, I'll give it that. If you follow that same math, eventually this machine will be more intelligent than all humanity combined by like trillion times, and it continues to scale up. We are only one million times more intelligent than the mosquito. Imagine there's a machine one trillion times more intelligent than all of us combined, if it is controlled by one entity that entity might exterminate us. So it's, we're, we need to be very careful, and I really think that we are, and I really think that we are getting into a world where all of us combined, the entire humanity combined, will get to AGI first, which means not a single one can control it, which means that we can use our strength, use our weaknesses as our, our strength. What is the weakness in humanity today, for example? They can't agree, right? That's one of the weaknesses. Can you get all humanity to agree into something? Even like definition of something? If you say the word ethics to a professor from Kais University or you say the word ethics to a professor from Saudi or Belgium or Iran, they all give you different definition. That is a weakness, right? Now we use that weakness to our strength because we cannot agree, all of us, that we should exterminate civilization or we should abandon some race, but not. And that's why if we all, all of us, build that AGI, we all own it, we all operate it, itself can become a trillion times better than humanity, but it's all operated by humanity, same way a mother will give birth to a baby, and that is her baby, and it's not, uh, you know, some, some stranger or whatnot. So, that's a little bit about the future of AI. Of course, uh, not sure how we're doing on time. Um, I can, for anyone who's technical, anyone technical in the room? Raise a hand, technical. Okay, well, if uh, anyone would like to ask any questions, uh, please feel free, I, I can go back to the slide of how uh, you can reach out. I'm more than happy to provide with a lot of uh, technical details. Um, I don't use LinkedIn for a lot of things, but one of them, it's pretty good for connecting. I know some people, they prefer different methods. So if you prefer Kakao, I have a Kakao. If you prefer WhatsApp, I have WhatsApp, I have Line, whatever, you know. I'm here to not only present some of the aspects that are happening in the world with copyright and how we can perhaps prevent them and make them global, maybe inspire one of you to lead that initiative. And if you're going to lead this initiative, and you know, you're going to talk to the Korean Copyright Commission or whatnot to kind of partner with them and say that we want to build the international copyright within the international protocols for international for, for, for AI security. Uh, I'm more than happy to help facilitate that. The world needs you, and if you can provide that to the world, it can be a huge opportunity. So uh, that's. Uh, that's it for today. There's a lot of uh, details, as I said. If you, if any one of you would like to go through those details, I thank you once again, Gamsam Nida. Thank you very much for your insights, Mr. Saliba, which gave us more food for thought on the copyright issues and laws in the future of the AI era. Thank you very much for coming all the way to this conference to share with us your valuable insight with us.